Coach of the Year on TBS last year, and Johnny Majors leads the Volunteers of Tennessee. They are 2-0-1 last week, a 24-24 tie with Army in Knoxville. The Volunteers are bruised and banged up. They have a lot of nicks and cuts, but they also have a lot of explosive firepower, and here come the Auburn Tigers. A loss to Miami, a loss to Texas, a defeat of Southern Mississippi, and now they're starting what they call the real season, the Southeastern Conference schedule. The Auburn Tigers, with their War Eagle mascot, 75,000 in the expanded Jordan-Hare Stadium, and the Tigers are very tough here on their home turf. And speaking of turf, it is natural grass. And it's a good surface today. The weather has been just excellent here. We're expecting partly cloudy skies. The temperature is going to be in the low 70s. At game time, it is 68 degrees. And as the clouds build up just a little bit here, we're not expecting really any kind of weather problem today. Just a beautiful day for Southeastern Conference football. We'll be back with the coin toss in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. So you won the toss. What do you want to do? And on the way to the second half, if you'll step right here, just you with me, just a second here. Right one to toss. Second. All right, that one. All right, that gives you first half choice. What do you want to do? Kick. You want to receive the ball, all right? Which way you gonna kick? Defend this goal. Well, turn around your backs around this way. Tennessee is taking the choice and is gonna receive on this end. Go, boy, shake hands. Get the ball club back out here. Let's have a good game. There's L for the referee. Tennessee will go on offense to begin this game. You ask how big is football in the Southeastern Conference? Well, there have been people getting ready for this football game since Thursday when we arrived on to start doing our Auburn research here on campus. There were vans and trailers and campers parked right outside Jordan-Hare Stadium. Tailgate parties and celebrations prior to the game have been going on all week. And I want to tell you, you can see by the newspapers, it is the big story. Everything's orange. The orange from Tennessee and the orange and the blue from Auburn University. The parties will go on into the evening since they were able to start this morning with our early television time kickoff. It's 11.15 in the morning uh, in the central time zone, so most of the tailgating here today is brunch with Bob and Tim. Although, Tim Foley, they didn't invite us to have any. I guess we were a little too busy. And as you can see, this is a major event in the lives of a lot of folks here in the Auburn Opelika area of central eastern Alabama. And we're ready for the kickoff. Tennessee has Terry McDaniel, number 86, standing on the goal line. Auburn's kicker, number 13, a freshman from Neptune Beach, Florida, Robert McGinty. Wisely, McDaniel elects to touch the ball back into the end zone. And Tennessee will go on offense. First down 10 from their own 20-yard line. Let's have a look at the Tennessee offensive lineup. It'll be Tony Robinson at quarterback. He is playing with a sore right shoulder, his throwing arm. Howard and Jones in the backfield. Jones with 518 yards. Cook the tight end. Clink scales and McGee. McGee the important receiver. The man they like to go to in crucial situations. The leading offensive line player is number 67, Bill Mayo, who will be playing left guard today. And we have Kenneth Cooper in the backfield at fullback in place of Howard. Johnny Jones, the tailback. Deafening noise for the checkoff at the line of scrimmage. Jones, two yards, and he's down. John Daly, number 96, the first man on the tackle for Auburn. The Auburn Tigers defensive alignment, the three down linemen, Robinson, Williams, and Holman. Key players there are Carr and McCurdy, the two middle linebackers. Tommy Powell, David King, Alvin Briggs, Nat Caesar in the defensive backfield, and David King, number 27, a preseason choice for all conference and all American honors. We'll watch him closely. Tennessee will have to beat him if they are successful with their passing game. It is. Second down, eight, Tennessee. Jones. On the play fake, it's an incomplete pass to the 27-yard line. The play fake went to Johnny Jones, Bill Eichholz, the intended receiver. Third down, long yardage for the Volunteers. The Volunteers showing a little early game jitters on the first play. B.B. Cooper went the wrong way on a toss to Jones. They'll come back with that last pattern 
in the next series or two because they had a couple receivers over. A little confusion in the Auburn secondary was created by Eichholz's motion. Three wide receivers in the game for Tennessee on third down eight from the Tennessee 22 yard line. Robinson. Short of the first down. He goes down at the 27. John Daly with his second tackle of the series. Number 96, the defensive right in for Auburn. And Tennessee will have to punt the ball. And they have a good man to do that. It'll be Jimmy Colquitt. He was an All-American two years ago, averaging 44.3 yards per punt this time. But he is kicking the ball to a man who can return it. Trey Gaines returned. There's the kicker, the punter, Colquitt. Gaines returned a punt against Tennessee last year for 81 yards and a touchdown. And had a 46-yard punt return for a TD last week against Southern Miss. Gaines, number 19. A fair catch at the 33-yard line. And there, the Auburn War Eagles will go on offense to begin this ball game. Tennessee unsuccessful on their first possession. Auburn's backfield, Pat Washington, will be handing the ball to A.G. Fullwood or Collins. Trey Gaines, the split end, Jeff Parks, the tight end. The Auburn offensive line, they've been getting very good play out of number 78, left tackle Steve Wallace. First down 10 from the 33. Which ball, number 23, is Kyle Collins, the left halfback. A couple of yards. Over the middle to about the 37. There's the Tennessee defensive unit. They led the league last year. They're last in the league in defense against the run going into this game. Key men, the linebackers, Jones, Zander, Tolls. Charles Benton is a substitute back there. They're injured, nicked up in the defensive secondary, and Tim Foley will be telling you more about that as we go along. Here's the pitch to Brett Foley to the 40 and no more. It'll be third down, short yardage for Auburn. Tennessee has really been searching on defense to find three folks up front that can that can play the line of scrimmage. Last year, they lost three starters to graduation. One of those fellows was Reggie White. We saw him play a couple of times, just an awesome player. They're trying to find some people that will step up and do that kind of job. Third down four out of the wishbone. Pat Washington, the key Washington coming down the line. Dale Jones takes him right away. He unloads the ball to Kyle Collins, and this guy's just a little ball of enthusiasm. He's an emotional leader on the football team, has a crack, great blocking downfield by Wagan, and big gain for Auburn. Kyle Collins had only 59 yards coming into the game. He got 23 right there, half of his earlier season total. Washington again. This is Fulwood. quarterback coming down the line of scrimmage here Pat Washington he's reading the first down line now he's reading the linebacker the linebacker doesn't move on him he tosses it back to Brent Fullwood and he finds that crack that's created by an excellent block by Trey Gaines on the outside takes it downfield but more important than that gain Alvin Tolles who is the heart of this Tennessee defense the middle linebacker is down on the football field seems to have a problem with his ankle we have 12 minutes, 8 seconds remaining in quarter number one. Scoreless game from Auburn, Alabama. This is Turner Network Television. You seem to plant and come back, Bob. Twisted his knee or ankle. There he is on the bench. They're looking at it now. A key player for Tennessee. And off to A.G. inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Auburn will have it second down about eight. Dale Jones making the stop for Tennessee. The key to that Tennessee defensive alignment are Jones, Toll, Xander, and McKenzie. Johnny Majors can ill afford to lose any of them. We'll have to hope that Alvin Tolls gets back in the game for the sake of the Volunteers. Second down and six for Auburn. It was Darren Miller, number 
71 who just leveled little Kyle Collins. He's 5'10", 185, hit by 240 pounds of middle guard. It was 19 Trey Gaines going into the game, and there's the offensive coordinator, Jack Crow. Pat Dye standing up with the hat on. Pat's got the tie on. I spent some time with, with it yesterday. He said he was doing some stall walking, like a horse walking back and forth in a stall before a race. Had trouble sitting down. Third down five, Auburn knocking on the Tennessee door early in the first quarter. Fullback, short of the first down, depending on where they spot it, but I believe he is short of the first down. Crowd already starting to yell for the Tigers to go for it. It's going to be about a full yard short. Another tight end, Ron Middleton entering the game. Auburn's going to go for the first down on fourth down and one. The ball spotted at the eight-yard line of Tennessee. Look for them to go with an unbalanced line and maybe do a little bit of shifting. Confused Tennessee defense. Forward. First down at the five-yard line. Running the power off the right side. McKenzie with the tackle for the Volunteers. First and goal, Auburn, just outside the five-yard line. Taking it to the right behind Jeff Lott and Eric Floyd. Just straight ahead, power blocking. That's all it is. Auburn's got the strength up front. They feel like they can move that Tennessee defensive line off the line of scrimmage, and that's simply what they did on that play. Auburn is just running at eight straight running plays on this drive. Forward to about the two and a half or three yard line. Terry Brown, the left side cornerback, coming up to key the tackle, sophomore from Macon, Georgia. And there's Fullwood, number 22, getting up off the tackle. Fullwood replacing the injured Bo Jackson. And what a big job he has. He is averaging only 3.6 yards a carry early in the year, has scored two touchdowns, has no catches, no receptions out of the backfield. He's 6 feet, 195. And his second down goal from the two. the fullback doesn't get it in third down goal Auburn if Tennessee can't get tolls back it's, it could be devastating to them they've got a de defense designed specifically for the wishbone they were going to use it a lot and Alvin tolls was the heart of that defense now Larry Marmee the defensive coordinator I'm, I'm sure is making plans on the run Lavoisier Fisher is in the ball game at one of the linebacker spots now. Reggie Ware in it, fullback for Auburn. Fullwood is the left halfback, Collins the right halfback. Third down goal. Fullwood. Tennessee ball at the three. Terry Brown fell on the fumble. There's the left cornerback, the sophomore from Macon. And a major turnover for Auburn. Big play defense, and that's what this... Volunteer defense is going to have to do. They're unbalanced to the right. Auburn, just a straight power dive. Goes up over the top, and it's knocked out. And I think that's Dale Jones coming around the corner. And he has been a big play defender for him. He's all over the field, and you'll watch him this afternoon. And there's Terry Brown, the man who recovered the thunder. Tennessee lining up their backs in their own end zone. to the five. Correction, William Howard, the fullback to the five-yard line. Howard's the freshman from Lima, Ohio. McCurdy with the tackle for Auburn. Tennessee's going to just try to hammer it out and give themselves a little bit of working room. This is also a position on the field. After this run, if they don't really feel they have a shot at a first down, they could let go of the long one. They could try to bomb them out here. Three wide receivers in the game right now. Second down eight, Tennessee. From the five. Opening quarter of play, scoreless game. Power to the six-yard line. Ben Thomas, the right tackle for Auburn. Let's watch the work of Raleigh McKenzie versus Harold Holman. There's Holman, 94. Holman, 94. He's the strongest man on that Auburn, Auburn defensive line. Excuse me, fights off the double team, and Ben Thomas comes over to make the play. Kenneth B.B. Cooper, the little five. Six. Robinson under pressure. Tackle 
record at the three. Number 90, Kevin Green with the stop. Auburn's defense has stopped Tennessee, and Colquitt will punt out of the end zone. Robin steps up, really doesn't have any time to look for somebody, and here comes Kevin Green chasing him down. And there, Mr. Clark Kent, Captain Crunch, number two, Greg Carr. What a receiver has to do in that situation, Bob, is he's got to try to work back toward the quarterback, toward the sideline. So if nothing else, Tony Robinson could just throw the ball out of bounds. He had nowhere to go with the football. As you can see, Jimmy Colquitt can hit him along. His uncle Craig played for Tennessee for the Pittsburgh Steelers now. Raised in a punting family, Tennessee's always been strong in this kicking game. Auburn has a very good punt returner in Trey Gaines. Both these coaches put a lot of emphasis on the kicking game. Colquitt gets it out of there. Gaines at the 47. Shifty runner down at the 39-yard line goes Trey Gaines. He was tackled by 81 Jeff Smith. We have a scoreless game from Jordan-Hare Stadium, 6.45 to go. Quarter number one. Here's a look at Pat Dye with Jack Crow. Turned the program around at East Carolina, went out to Wyoming, and they brought him back here to Auburn. He lived in the dorm with his wife and family for a year and a half to be with his players. First down 10 Auburn from the 39 to the 35-yard line. Goes Brent Fullwood. There you see the Auburn Tiger mascot. Of course, the Auburn Tigers have another even more famous mascot, the famous War Eagle. War Eagle number five is on the sideline. The first one goes all the way back to 1892. Second down six, Auburn. AG with some tough yardage up the middle. Darren Miller, the freshman nose guard for Tennessee. They call him the middle guard at Tennessee with the stop. And there's Tommy Agee, sophomore from Maplesville, Alabama. Most consistent back. He's played virtually every play. 219 yards in one game as a freshman. He's good for two or three yards every time you hand him the ball. 38 Carlos Campbell in at left halfback now. That's Ted Washington turning up driving to the 24-yard line. Auburn first down. Dale Jones with the stop. Auburn drove the ball right downfield on their opening possession after Tennessee failed and had to punt to them. Auburn hasn't thrown the ball yet. One of the best assets a quarterback can have in the wishbone is to make the proper decision to read the line. That time Washington did an excellent job, kept the football upfield seven yards. Campbell, Ware, and Graham are the running backs for Auburn. And off to the fullback, that is Reggie Ware, the freshman from Huntsville, Alabama. The three fullbacks for Auburn are Tommy Agee, Demetrius Threat from Alabaster, who they hope not to play. They're, they're hoping to hold him out for a while, hasn't played yet. Reggie Ware, the second team fullback. There is Johnny Majors, the man that most of the folks in Tennessee believe should have won the Heisman Trophy in 1956. Our sidekick Paul Horning won that year. <laughs> the help of Charlie Callahan, SID Supreme. Paul interviewed Johnny Majors this week. Good friends. Here's Pat Washington at the 20, at the 16, and Crunch. Reggie McKenzie, 240-pound senior from Knoxville, number 51 with the hit. Let's watch Pat Washington and all the knocks and bumps that a wishbone quarterback takes. Little boot, bootleg. You see Jeff Lott pulling out in front of him. They tried to get Clayton Buford deep in the corner. Nice job of coverage by Terry Brown. Forced Washington to tuck the ball and run. Washington 6'1", 200 pounds, junior from Mobile, Alabama. He's a, a good athlete. He can run. They don't like to see him run a lot. He can. Third down one. Oh, full one. You can hear that hitting all the way up here. Dale Jones with his third tackle of the afternoon for Tennessee, number 54. I believe Auburn was successful on the third and one. Let's see where they spot the football. But Dale Jones is coming from his outside linebacker position. Larry Marmee says about him, Larry's the defensive coordinator of Tennessee, he says you can line him up anywhere and he's going to get to the football. He's one of those types of players. Played a lot as a freshman. As you watch Pat Dye looking on. There's Al Ford, the referee. They bring the sticks in to make the measurement here. And it is first down over. 
Watching this ball game in the booth right near us is the athletic director from Tennessee, Bob Woodruff, as you take a look at Marmee and the Tennessee coaches. And Bob's mom and dad are watching in Decatur, Georgia today. Joe and Mary Woodruff, 95 years young. We wanted to tell you that Bob's been, your, your kid has been behaving himself here in Auburn, Alabama. I've got a story on your kid in a second, Joe and Mary. First down, 10, Auburn at the 14 of Tennessee. Quick handoff to Demetrius Street. That's his first play of the year. The sophomore from Alabaster, Alabama, number 26. So, obviously, Pat Dye is going to use all three of those fullbacks, A.G., Ware, and Threat. Threat is spelled T-H-R-E-A-T, and his first name is Demetrius. He's destined to be a star. Right, yeah. Dave Hauser, the uh, SID here, said that as he develops, they're going to have to change his name to Threat. Demetrius Threat. I figured that'd be Heisman Trophy candidate name. Second down, 10, Auburn. Washington throws his first pass. Incomplete. Caught out of the end zone by tight end Jeff Park. There were 18 straight running plays by Auburn, and then a pass at a crucial moment, and that's how they can hurt you with that wishbone. Good call by Jack Crow. This is an option pass. He comes down the line of scrimmage. If he doesn't feel like the receiver has it, he simply pitches the ball back to the back. He thought he could stick it in there to Parks. It's a little high. Big defensive play here for Tennessee. It's third down 10 Auburn from the 14-yard line. Three minutes left in the first quarter. It's a scoreless game. Washington wants to go to the air again. Has time. It is complete to the six-yard line. They need to get inside the five. That's Kyle Collins with the pass reception, his third of the year. Now there's another decision to be made by Auburn. Simply two deep, five short zone. Tennessee settles and reacts to the ball being thrown. And Auburn's going to go for it on fourth down again. The last time, Fullwood fumbled. Tennessee dodged the bullet. This time, Auburn's going to reload and fire the gun again. Pat Dye would like to get a knockout punch early, I think, in here. Double tight ends. Fullwood. It's going to be very close. We'll just have to watch the mark of the ball. Undoubtedly, they'll bring the sticks in here. Here they come. It's very close. It is a first down. They say it is a first down, and here's a look at that trench warfare. Steve Wallace, Steve Wilson, Yan Coward, Jeff Lott. Go, again, they go to the right side. Behind Floyd. He almost lost it again, Tim. A helmet hit that ball as he died. Hang on to that football, Brent. Majors. Watching his team dig in. First and goal, Auburn at the four of Tennessee. This volunteer defense must think they're at the Alamo here, the way they played on the goal line. Washington stopped at the five. Xander, 45, with a tackle. He's the team's leading tackler. Out of the linebacker position. Still no word on whether or not Alvin Tolles will return to the Tennessee defense. We do know that they're icing and bandaging his ankle right now. No word on whether he can get back in the game. And they put Joe Kofer to play that special position in there. He's a strong safety, has played linebacker. These Tennessee folks are really fighters when you get down inside the five-yard line. Tough to get in on. Asian, Collins, forward in the backfield. Washington on the option. He has any room. Short of the goal line, down to the two goes Pat Washington. It will be third down goal from about the two-yard line. This is the sixth play of the game for Auburn inside the Tennessee five-yard line. Still a scoreless game. Pat Washington. Pat Dye has a lot of confidence in that young man. Just a fine individual, well respected by his teammates and feels that he can handle the pressure that will come to bear. Excellent performance. Third down goal from the two. Mix up, pitch. attempt freshman kicker from Neptune Beach Florida Robert McGinty he's perfect on the season so far it's good 
48 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. The score, Auburn Tigers 7, Tennessee Volunteers nothing. This is Turner Network Television. You know, watch Kyle Collins here now, a walk-on transfer from Jacksonville State. Washington holds the ball, tosses it to Collins, and watch him beat this one-on-one -on -one tackle. Fights his way into the end zone. Kyle Collins, six points. And that ball is going to touch down in the end zone, go out for a touchback. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line where Tennessee will go on offense, first down 10, trailing 7 to nothing with only 48 seconds to go in the first quarter from Jordan-Hare Stadium. Temperature 70 degrees, partly cloudy skies. What a day for football in the heart of the Deep South. Auburn 7, Tennessee nothing. This is Turner Network Television. Washington, number 10 on the sidelines, the man who makes the wishbone go. We talked to him before the game about how to run the wishbone. In the wishbone, it seems if you learn something every day, a defense can present you a problem just about every time you run a triple option. Uh, you got to be able to handle yourself uh, with poise and confidence uh, running the option. You got to make the reads and everything has to be executed well. If, if you mess up one point at a time, you can mess up the whole scheme of the offense. Well, Pat Washington has handled the ball himself on the goal line, but certainly not the part of Washington. Naked reverse. Robinson, man's wide open, incomplete. Out here to the 38-yard line. That pass was intended for number 88, Tim McGee, on the Tennessee first down from their own 20. Tennessee has no yards passing so far and only six, seven yards running the ball. There's the scoring drive, 39 yards, consuming six minutes. Auburn had the ball virtually the entire first quarter. We have 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter right now. from the Auburn defense. Gerald Williams, 98, the man with the quarterback pressure on Robinson. This is merely a screen, Bob. Comes back, he's going out to tail back the whole way. Nothing there, just throws it in the dirt. Again, a good job of coverage by the Auburn, Auburn defense. Tennessee 0 for 3 throwing the ball. They have only six yards. Make that seven yards running it thus far. Third down, 10 from their own 20. Bottled up the entire first quarter. Draw to Jones. First down. And more to the 37-yard line. Johnny Jones. Tackled by 31, Vic Beasley. 17 yards for the tailback who came into the game, the nation's second-leading rusher. I mean, does this rascal run with intensity? Look at Mayo going out right now, take on a linebacker. Here goes Johnny Jones, running with power. That's the furthest Tennessee has been away from their goal line in this game. 17 seconds to go, first quarter. First down, John Valentino. There's Jones again to the 41-yard line. Johnny Jones, tackled by Ben McCurdy, number 52 for Auburn. McCurdy and Tom Defensive team searching for a leader, searching for an identity, you might say. First quarter, this is the best they've had of the game right here. Second down, six, Tennessee. Opening play of the second quarter. Robinson, plenty of time. It's picked off by number nine, strong safety, Tom Powell. Robinson threw it right into the coverage. That's the first section of the year for Tennessee's quarterbacks. As this develops, you're going to see a two-deep zone. Tommy Powell is going to run with Ike Holtz man-to-man. -man. He's chasing him downfield, expecting deep help. The ball is underthrown. Powell leaps to make the interception. He used Mr. Intensity in that Auburn defense. Auburn had five defensive backs in there. It's first down, 10 Auburn. They lead 7-0. Washington opening to the 40-yard line. Close to a first down, may have one. Now let's go back to Atlanta for a college football update.
Morning. There's Pat Washington, the Auburn quarterback. They seem to think they've found the man. Excuse me, Paul. That was Craig Sager in Atlanta. First down, 10. Auburn. Wigand to the 44-yard line of Tennessee. Freddie Wigand, his ninth catch on the year. He is the leading receiver for the Auburn Tigers, a freshman from Gadsden, Alabama. Well, Freddie Wiegand, he's a Terry Beasley look-alike, both in the face and also the way he plays. That's that option pass again. Washington coming down the line. If the receiver's there, he hits him, and Wiegand worked himself open. Simple turn route, eight yards deep. Washington, two out of three, throwing the football for 25 yards. That was a 16-yarder there. No, Washington's going to go to the air again. Throws right side. 38 is Collis Campbell. Stop for little, if any, gain. About the 43-yard line of Tennessee. Charles Benton, the strong safety, driving him out of bounds. Tennessee starting strong safety. Charles Davis is injured, and that certainly hurts that Tennessee secondary. Well, Charlie Davis played free safety for him last year and just had an outstanding year. Great range, and uh, unquestionably they miss him in there, but uh, they've got some adequate people, and Vernon Bass right now is getting his feet wet at the right cornerback. He's on Gainus right now. Let's see what happens. Second down eight, Auburn from the 43 of Tennessee. And off to the fullback. Across the 40. That's Reggie Ware, tackled by Johnny McAdams. Might mention that Alvin Tolles, number 44, Tennessee's excellent senior right inside linebacker, is still on the sideline. Was injured very early in the game. Their icing down is, I believe it's his right knee. Third down five, Auburn. for 82 parks the tight end line of scrimmage is at the 39 yard line and let's watch Dale Jones Mr. Big Play for Tennessee number 54 he's coming up field he might have had coverage on that play Bob I'm not sure sometimes when a linebacker is assigned to a back he'll pretend like he's blitzing Dale didn't really seem like he was firing off the ball it looked like he was more or less trying to keep that back in the backfield Charles Benton will take the punt off the foot of Lewis Colbert, number five, Auburn's punter, second in the SEC in punting of 35 yards per punt. Try to get it out of the coffin corner. It's got a high one. It's gonna, it has a chance to be touched down inside the 10. It is. Just outside the five-yard line. Number 90. He's had a good game so far. That's Kevin Green. Tennessee's bottled up inside their 10 again. It'll be first down 10 from the 8 when we return. Some college football scores. Texas leading Penn State, 7-0. Pittsburgh looking for their first win. Leading West Virginia. And Alabama leading Vanderbilt. And a big one at Tuscaloosa today. Homecoming for the Crimson Tide. That's the first quarter score. Of course, Vanderbilt undefeated going into the game. The Tennessee starts in a hole again. Tennessee has started once on their three, once on their eight, and twice on their 20. No field position at all for the volunteers thus far in this game. Johnny Jones. Not much out to the 12. Ben Thomas with the tackle number 91 for the Auburn Tigers. Lead draws Tennessee's favorite offensive play. They got to try to crack that loose. Wilkerson, Bill Mayo, Raleigh McKenzie going to work in hard to get Johnny Jones to crack. Second down six Tennessee from the 12. Very spread formation. Two receivers left, one right. Spread it out so they can get it to Johnny Jones. He gets one yard, not much more, and Ben Thomas is there again. Now back to our studios in Atlanta. Third down five, Tennessee. Tony Robinson is 0 for 4 with one interception. with a sore right shoulder has an interception and now he loses the ball into the end zone for a safety looking downfield he's looking to throw it back to McGee he gets blindsided I don't know uh, look 
looked like he'd started his motion forward. Uh, you can't feel that in the in in a stadium like this. You can't hear that coming. And Gerald Robinson, who's a great pass rusher, second team All SEC last year, had seven sacks last year. Just drilled him. It looked like to me that his arm was in motion. Nine to nothing, Auburn Tigers. What Tennessee is doing, Bob, they're lining up Timmy McGee, who's their big threat, back away from the side of the two receivers. They're trying to have Auburn cover the wide side of the field and work the short side with Timmy McGee. He was open there, and just as Robinson went to let go of the football, Gerald Robinson was there. Tennessee will have a free kick from their own 20-yard line. In most cases, teams elect to punt the ball here to get better hang time and better coverage. So Tennessee not only has to give up the two points on the safety, but they'll give the ball back to Auburn with undoubtedly very good field position. Nine to nothing. Tigers leading Tennessee. 11.50 to go. Second quarter of play. Auburn, last year's SEC champion. Sugar Bowl victors over the University of Michigan. Finished ranked number three in the country. Many people picked them to be number one in the country this year, but they opened with losses to Miami and Texas. They defeated Southern Mississippi and are looking very impressive offensively and defensively here today. Colquitt gets away a cannon shot. Number 19 is Trey Gaines. Bobbles the ball, turns it upfield. Gaines is down at the 29-yard line. A good job on the free kick by free kick by Colquitt and by the coverage by the volunteers. And Auburn has the ball. As you look at the ball rolling out of bounds, two points for Auburn. This is Turner Network Television. The man in the shirt with his arm in the sling is Bo Jackson. Big, big loss for Auburn, but uh, some people, Tim Foley included, I think Tim thinks that maybe the loss of Jackson could help Auburn become an overall better team by forcing other players. I think that's something we should talk about during the game. First down, 10. Tigers. From the 30. This is Fullwood, the man who's replacing Bo Jackson. Fullwood gets a yard or two, not much more. Number 51, Reggie McKenzie. And number 98, Richard Brown with a stop for Tennessee. I was on a football team back in 1972 that went 17 and 0. We did that without the services of Bob Greasy for the most of the year. And I think when you lose, when you have a superstar on a football team, sometimes everyone becomes too dependent on his performance. Obviously, Jackson, a great player. Everybody else on this Auburn team has to step up and do their part now. On the second down, seven forward stopped at the 37-yard line. Auburn needs to get just just slightly across the 40 for the first down. Tackle by Richard Brown again. He's a freshman middle guard from Vera Beach, Florida. Johnny Major turned programs around at Iowa State and Pittsburgh. Excellent football coach that has produced some good head coaches with Jackie Sherrill, Jimmy Johnson, Larry Lacewell. But right now he's searching for some answers. Campbell, A.G., and Collins in Wishbone backfield for Auburn. Ball is on the ground, followed on by Tennessee at the 37-yard line. Number 54 is Dale Jones. We talk about him being a big play man. We asked his coach, Johnny Majors, what made him a big play man. He says it's that intangible quality that can't be described, but he's always around the ball. We're going to see it again here. Looks like Washington tried to pull it out, and there was some confusion on the handoff. And he got a face full. Of, Ag got a face full of Carl Zander. And Tennessee has the ball, and their best field position of the day, first and ten at the Auburn 38. Auburn leads 9-7 with 10:25 to go. Complete to the 27-yard line to number 88, that is McGee, Timmy McGee, a junior from Cleveland, Ohio. He's the big play receiver for the Volunteers. He's an explosive pass catcher. It's kind of a blitz pattern, dropping inside Johnny Daly. They're hoping they catch a little man-to-man -man coverage there, but they want to get him the ball quickly because he can take off with it. He's limping right now, though, Bob. That was Tennessee's first first down. 27 of Fullback, Howard. 
to the 24, tackled by 52 Ben McCurdy, the weak side linebacker for Auburn. Now let's go back to our studios in Atlanta for this college football. Second down seven from the 24 of Auburn. There's going to be a penalty on the play. The pass was intended for number nine, Vince Carter, but he was held up at the line of scrimmage illegally in the mind of the official. There could be a defensive holding call here against Auburn. There's Al Ford, the referee. Disregard the flag. No penalty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, he may have decided that the contact was made in that five-yard zone and thereby was legal. It looked like Alvin Briggs played it pretty well on that play. It's a blitz check off fade down the sideline. Third down, seven Tennessee from the 24 of Auburn. Jones doesn't get it. Only a yard before he is stopped by 98 Gerald Williams. Tennessee may come in here to try to get three. They trail by a score of nine to nothing. And in comes Fuad Raves, the Tennessee field goal kicker, a senior from Miami, Florida. He is five out of six on the year, and the only miss so far for Raves has been a field goal attempt of further than 50 yards. This one will be right at 40 yards from the center of the field. The holder for Tennessee, excuse me, Tennessee, Jack Sells. Tennessee obviously needs to get something out of this turnover. They need to get some points out of this possession. It is good. A 40-yard field goal for Fuad Reves, and Tennessee now trails Auburn 9-3 with 8.36 to go in the first half from Jordan-Hare Stadium. One of the biggest problems for Auburn in this young 1984 season has been turnovers, and they've turned it over twice here in the first half, one time denying them a potential touchdown, then that time allowing Tennessee to come down for the 40-yard field goal and get on the scoreboard. That was Randy Campbell's real asset at quarterback. In 1982, they led the nation in the fewest amount of turnovers, and their turnover ratio was the best of any team in the country. Pat Dye expressed some concern about that before this football game, but she feels they've made some progress. Comes down to number 11, Clayton Buford, and there's a penalty marker on the play out near the 25-yard line. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. And the penalty is against Auburn. There's L. Ford, the referee. That's the first penalty that's been accepted in the ball game. The flag thrown earlier, of course, was just picked up, so they'll mark it off against the Tigers. You'd mentioned Bob Woodruff earlier, the dean of football at uh, Tennessee. Clippy on the run back. And first down. I was in Marco Island last summer to talk to the NCAA athletic directors. Stand and wait to catch a cab back to the airport. He came by and he and his pretty wife, Trudy, gave me a ride out there. I learned more about Tennessee football in five minutes than I could have learned in five years. Out of the wishbone. to the 28-yard line. No, they say he went out of bounds at the 23. Goes number 23, Kyle Collins. There is Cooper who chased him out of bounds. Watch Kyle Collins. Johnny Majors remarked that this is a wishbone team, but they're also a power football team, and that was nothing but a power sweep as Kyle Collins stepped out of bounds. We'll see it again. A lot of, a lot of schools thought the only ability that this young man had coming out of high school was availability. But Auburn has turned him into a good football player here, and he's got the chance as Jackson is hurt. First down, 10 Auburn from their own 23-yard line. Hand off to the fullback. Stopped with very little gain, Tommy Agee. From Maplesville, Alabama, Joe Coper again making the tackle. Coper, the strong safety for Tennessee, has moved into that kind of monster linebacker spot. We'll be playing up closer to the line of scrimmage. You'll see him in a lot of tackles since Alvin Tolles, Tennessee's senior linebacker, and the real key man of the Tennessee defensive alignment is out of the out of the game with an injury. Second down, nine over. The Tigers, 24, Washington. Whoa. On the 50-yard line, Pat Washington, Dale Jones with a tackle, a 27-yard run by Pat Washington. 
Now, he reminds me of our man in the booth, Paul Horning, here. Paul used to put that hand on Jerry Kramer and just said, lead me down the road, Jerry. And look at Washington here. Pulls out of all those Tennessee players, and who drags them down? Dale Jones, all over the place. Washington is the leading ball carrier for Auburn in this game. Six carries, 50 yards. First down, 10 at the midfield strike. Gain of maybe a yard. Stopped by Joe Cobra, number 42. And it's nice seeing the fans there from Auburn. Mom send money. My son Dave, by the way, is a student at Florida State, is up visiting some friends at Auburn today. He came in before the game to get some money. Yeah, course. he doesn't ask you to send it. He comes and picks it up. Dad, I'm here He's to collect. He's leaving it up to you. <laughs> Where's the check? I'm here to collect. <laughs> Second down nine, Auburn. Left side of the line jumping off a little early. Steve Wallace pulling out a little soon. Jump the green light. There's Al Ford. Speaking of Dave, he said he thought his, his fraternity pledge life would be a lot easier in college if I could mention his fraternity, Alpha Tau Omega, but I told him I couldn't do that. So I won't, Dave. <laughs> it's against the rules. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure. That's second penalty of the game. Illegal procedure against the War, War Eagles. Actually, you have to be careful when you call the Auburn Tigers War Eagles. The old Auburn football fans, the long-timers, call them nothing but Tigers. But they yell War Eagle a lot. Second down, 14, big play! Number 71, Darren Miller, his first quarterback sack of the year. And it came at a critical time for this volunteer defense. It certainly did. Tennessee hasn't been getting much of a pass rush. He comes off the double team. The Auburn offensive line gets a little confused, and Miller comes clean for a big play. Darren Miller's been having his problems at middle guard, but he's, uh, he's had several tackles here today. And a quarterback sack, three tackles and a quarterback sack on the day. He's just a freshman. He's still learning what's going on. Third and 21, Washington, plenty of time. side of the field parks found a hole down the sideline but Wagan came all the way across the field Terry Brown comes up and puts the hammer on him nice read there by uh, Pat Washington 23 yard pass reception here's Thomas Campbell he tiptoed around the right end to the 30 yard line gain of about eight yards on that play and this Auburn wishbone is looking very effective against Tennessee. We're in the second quarter, 5.25 remaining from Jordan-Hare Stadium. Of course, Army ran the ball very well on Tennessee. Tennessee is last in the Southeast Conference in defense uh, against the rush, allowing a little over 200 yards per game. First down, Auburn to the 24. That was Reggie Ware, the fullback. First man out of the wishbone. Carl Zander on the tackle. And he's the strongest player that they have in there now in terms of ability. Uh, but he's kind of a blue-collar linebacker. He's not going to make as many big plays as Dale Jones, but he's consistent game after game. Ten tackles, 11 tackles, always around the ball. First down, 10. Here's Campbell again. by Vince Clark over there on the defensive left side. And this Tennessee volunteer defensive unit is much like a mass unit, and they're having to play against a very good Auburn offensive line. Watch Jeff Parks up on the top. Rob Schuler. Schuler's really a scrapper. The right tackle only weighs 230 pounds, and I, and I think he lies a little bit when he says 230. Nice job of blocking by the offensive front of Auburn. 4.55 to go, second quarter. Auburn leading Tennessee 9-3. First down and goal just inside the 10. Great job on the pitch. Kyle Collins out of bounds. 
one foot away from the goal line. It was Vernon Bass with the stop. This is magic at quarterback by Pat Johnson. Hangs on to the ball, hangs on to the ball, fakes the turn up field to draw in Dale Jones and lifts it up on top to Kyle Collins. Bass really hustles to get there to prevent the score. Great end zone view by our TBS Sports production cameras. Hope you're enjoying the game wherever you're watching along the TNT network. First and goal, Auburn. AG stopped. Whoa. The ball came loose, I believe, after the whistle. Tennessee's defense, as I said, it's a mash unit. I mean, they've got everybody patched and bandaged and this player filling in for that guy and so on and so forth, but they still hit you. Xander and McKenzie that time. And remember, they lost Reggie White from last year. Everybody's All-American at defensive tackle and Mark Studaway, who's now playing with the Houston Oilers. And they just haven't been able to replace him with that quality. They've got a lot of young players that will grow to that stature, but not yet. Second down goal, Auburn. That's Reggie Ware, number 36, the fullback. Reggie Ware. Takes it over the left side. See Middleton firing off the ball. Stacy Searles, Steve Wilson, touchdown. And that's the first touchdown ever in college football for Reggie Ware. Freshman from Huntsville, Alabama. Here's McGinty. Point after is good. Auburn, 16, Tennessee, 3. 3 minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the first half from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. The Southeastern Conference opener for these two teams as you watch it again. This is Turner Network Television. I believe that the best of what we stand for as a nation comes from the fact that we care. We'll pitch in to help a neighbor stand up to a problem and stand by each other. That's our heritage. Morning. And whether you live in Pittsburgh or Paris, Texas, Los Angeles or Lynchburg, Tennessee, you have a national life and accident agent who believes in that heritage and is there to help. National life has never forgotten that personal service is what makes us different. Drive. We'll keep you updated on college football scores from all over the country and particularly around the Southeastern Conference today. Mississippi State playing Florida, Vanderbilt, and Alabama. After one quarter, it's Alabama 7, Vanderbilt 6. Tulane's playing at Ole Miss. Georgia plays tonight at South Carolina. Here it is 16 to 3, Auburn leading Tennessee. Terry McDaniel at the goal line. Almost had a scene, but not quite. Down at the 25-yard line. Tackle made by number 90, Kevin Green. There's Terry McDaniel, number 86, a freshman from Saginaw, Michigan. Wesley Pryor has been Tennessee's kick returner, one of the very best in the country. And Pryor, another one of the injured volunteers, is out for the season with knee surgery last week. Wish that young man well. 3.32 to go, second quarter from their own 25. It's complete to 81, Jeff Smith, the tight end. Into Auburn territory, out of bounds at the 41-yard line of the Tigers. Jeff Smith's first catch of the year. They bring Jeff Smith, who was a starter last year before he hurt his knee, all the way across the field. They cleared it out with the wide receiver, and he comes in behind that zone makes the catch big play same play the Hurricanes ran against Florida 39 yard pass completion the longest pass completion of Robinson's career Jones nowhere maybe two yards Ben Thomas every place Jones goes it seems there also goes number 91 Ben Thomas they'll get to know each other very well this afternoon Thomas is number 91 time left in the half if that's difficult for you to read, it says 302. Tennessee was running with two tight ends and two wide outs in those last two plays. Now they they've got the they've got the same alignment here. They shift up the double. Second down eight from the 39-yard line of Auburn. Pressure down goes Robinson. 
Ben McCurdy was tackler number one. You saw the rest of the blue jerseys in on him. Arthur Johnson among them, number 40. You see Joe Plink scales on the outside. He's not looking for him, though. He's looking for McGee, who had, for the first time, lined up in the slot and was curling in the middle of the field. But really not enough time to, to get it to him as McCurdy was blitzing up the middle and Curry's playing with a big cut on his forehead. Doesn't practice all week with a helmet, but when he steps in and puts it on, he's a hitter. 11-yard loss on the sack. Third down, 17. Robinson, pressure again. Screen. That's Johnny Jones fumbling the ball out of bounds. It went out of bounds at about the 49-yard line of Tennessee, Gerald Williams. With the pressure on the quarterback. Hello to everybody in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, who's watching our telecast today of Southeastern Conference football. Not too far from Johnny Major's hometown. Tennessee's tried to run the screen a couple of times. The first time, Phillips played it extremely well, and that time, Robinson didn't let the play develop. They read it well and smelled it out before it had a chance to go anywhere. Here's Colquitt again, getting the workout this afternoon for Tennessee. Woo, good hang time. Gaines is going to have to call fair catch and does at the 13. Tennessee allowing less than two yards per putt return coming into this game. So far, there's been no yardage for Tennessee or for Auburn on returning that putt. I'm sorry. One of the reasons for that, obviously, Bob, is that high hang time that Cole quick gives you. And it's not only the distance, but you, you get the hang time so you can get down under that ball. A lot of fair catches to those punts. There's your halftime. We'll have the SEC Player of the Week. He's a kicker from the University of Georgia. If you're an SEC fan, you'll know who that is. We'll hear the bands at halftime. We hope you'll stay with us. Round up and highlights. And a couple of yards around the right end by Brent Fullwood, number 22. 140 remaining in the half here. It is Auburn 16, Tennessee 3. One of the things that Pat Dye likes about the wishbone is that you don't need to have superior talent to run it. It's an execution offense, and players on the defense are eliminated without even having to block them. So you can... It's a ball control offense, and you can get by with a little thinner core. Second down, six. A.G. out to about the 24-yard line, the fullback. A.G., Threat, and Ware have been trading action at the fullback spot. Fullwood and Campbell at the right half, and Collins, mainly Collins, at the left half position here today. And Mr. Pat Dye, what a job he's done here at Auburn. Before that, East Carolina or actually Wyoming for one year, and then East Carolina. And everywhere he goes, Pat Dye brings a winner with him. If you have dinner with him, as Tim and I did, and get to know the man, you can see why. He is intense about his job, and he loves these young men. He really does. I was in his office yesterday, and Doug Smith came in, who was a star for him last year in the defensive line. And he said to say hi to Doug's mom, Miss Mary, back in Messick, North Carolina. He knows his players well. It's picked up. Tennessee has the ball. It's number 51, Reggie McKenzie. A big turnover from Pat Washington. That's his third interception on the year and a big break for Tennessee with 53 seconds to go in the second quarter. Here's that little option pass that we talked about. Tries to pop it over the top. Jeff Parks, that didn't look open to me. And uh, the ball might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. But it doesn't look like it's spiraling real well, which might have brought it down. Speaking of Pat, Pat will probably be wondering about throwing that ball with Reggie McKenzie standing there late in the half in Auburn territory and Tennessee with good field position. This is Jones. Down to the 25-yard line. McCurdy with his fifth tackle of the afternoon on Johnny Jones, and there's the time ticking out, 40, 39. And uh, just remember, Tennessee does have three timeouts and a very good field goal kicker. Here's Robinson taking a lot of time as he switches his backs into the eye. Draw to Johnny Jones. Jones got all the way to the 16-yard line, clocked down to 19 seconds where it stopped. David King and Ben McCurdy combining on the tackle. 75,000 here at Jordan-Hare are looking on to see if Tennessee can get some more points on the board before this half ends. Timeout, volunteers. Johnny Majors. 
I can't see the man with the headphones on. I'm not sure if that's Walt Harris or not. No, that's the uh, that's the running back coach right there, talking with uh, Robinson. The Tennessee has the ball at the 17-yard line of Auburn, trailing by a score of 16 to three. They've called one of their three timeouts now to decide exactly what to execute to get some more points. Uh, Tennessee, of course, would love to get that ball into the end zone. It would certainly make this game a whole new story as Auburn has dominated play here but has turned the ball over three times in the first half two fumbles and one interception and that's the problem that Pat Dye has had with his Tigers all year long the turnover play Pat walking on the sideline in the red shirt Frank Ogle the defensive coordinator He's down from the booth they're ready to go into the locker room the noise will become deafening now there are a lot of volunteers fans who have made the trek from Knoxville and East Tennessee and from wherever they live to Jordan Hare Stadium here. First and 10, Tennessee at the 17 of August. 19 seconds to go in the first half. It is incomplete. And would Timmy McGee like to have that back? Had he not juggled the ball, it was a Tennessee touchdown. But he bounced it, did not have possession, stepped over the sideline, incomplete pass. This is the matchup. This is the matchup that Wall Harris was looking for. David King, man-to-man, -man, weak side. King bites on the inside move. McGee breaks open to the outside. Robinson delivered the ball on time. Catchable. McGee's the kind of guy who would catch that pass uh, for the touchdown 99 times out of 100. And I guess he's sorry that that one... The one happened there. Sometimes when you work yourself that wide open, it distracts from your concentration. On second down and 10 from the 17 of Auburn. To the one yard line goes the tight end, number 81, Jeff Smith. Clock down to five seconds. Tennessee has the opportunity. There's an Auburn player down. Tennessee has the opportunity now to decide for field goal or touchdown great camera work what you're seeing here is one-on-one -on -one coverage as the two receivers cross McGee going to the inside Smith coming to the outside almost scores that's Nat Caesar number 49 making the play and this is how he got injured stopping the touchdown he just got bent over backwards oh what do you do if you are Johnny Majors there's the injured player Johnny Majors has five seconds time for one play one foot out of the end zone I got to think he's going to try to get the touchdown. Looks like Nat Caesar will be okay. We certainly hope that's the story. Well, one thing's for sure. He makes the right decisions more times than the wrong one. He was the national coach of the year back in 73. Trailing 16 to 3, Tim, you, you figure he's going to go for it. What do you think? I think he's going to go for it. I think that they're in a position now. They really haven't moved the football effectively. They know that they're having problems on defense. They have to get points on the board. Two opportunities for touchdowns on passes. One juggled by Tim McGee, and then an excellent defensive play by Caesar to keep the big 240-pound tight end Smith out of the end zone. Here it is. Time stats, as you can see on the right, the Tigers lead in virtually every category except passing. They also lead in turnovers, and Tennessee may be fortunate to be trailing only 16 to 3 here, Tim. I don't think there's any question. Auburn was down there a couple of times, couldn't get it in. But Tennessee defensively came up with some big plays, and they have to be happy with their goal line inside the 20 defense. Now, out in the field, it's a little bit different story. The wishbone is certainly working for Auburn. They're almost moving at will out in the field. There's Brent Fullwood to return. He is 
averaging 31 yards per kickoff return and leads the conference in that category. It's not coming down to him, though. It comes down to Arthur Johnson. Johnson out to the 30-yard line on the short kickoff from Fuad Reves. Wisely kept the ball away from Brent Fullwood, but still pretty good field position for the Auburn Tigers to open the second half. From Jordan-Hare Stadium, Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. 16-3, Auburn leading Tennessee. Again, two big plays at the end of the half by Auburn's defense. Matt Caesar and Arthur Johnson making two great plays to keep Tennessee out of the end zone. Fullwood, A.G. Collins in the wishbone for Auburn. There's the handoff to the fullback, A.G., out to the 33-yard line, tackled by Darren Miller, the middle guard for Tennessee. Auburn just ran the ball all day long in that first half, almost 200 yards, and there's another Tennessee volunteer player shaken up. Joe Coper, he seems to be okay, though, and is headed back to the huddle, and Pat Dye's doing what he wants to do with a wishbone, and that's controlling the ball. I think Darren Miller, the nose guard for Tennessee, is probably having his best game to date. Second down eight, Tigers. Here's a reverse to Fullwood. Hit at the 32. Played intelligently by Reggie McKenzie, number 51. The left outside linebacker for Tennessee is fifth tackle of the afternoon. You see a little counter action out of the wishbone. Trying to get Fullwood back on the weak side with the trap. 69, Rob Schuler. Trying to knock some volunteers out of the way. Third down seven. Tigers. Opening series of the second half. Auburn leading 16 to three. Almost picked off by Cooper. There were no Auburn receivers really near where that hit. He was looking for Wagand. It was about five yards upfield. So fourth down, Tennessee's defense holds. And in goes Lewis Colbert for his second punt of the afternoon. McGee will be the deep man for the University of Tennessee, standing at his own third. Colbert. It's a line drive. Probably should be some return here. See if the wall sets up. Not very well. And Colbert goes down at the 29, tackled by 31, Victor Beasley. So the Volunteers, trailing 16-3 in the opening moments of the second half, have an opportunity to see if they can get anything going on offense. We'll be back in a moment. about hanging over the rafters. Jordan Hare Stadium seats about 72,000 plus. They've had as many as 75,000 in here for a game and that could be the case today. I don't see any empty seats. Tennessee's ball trailing Auburn 16 to 3. First down 10 from their 30. Here's Johnny Jones as the opening for the first down. That's the 42 yard line. Harold Holman with the tackle. The lead draw by Tennessee, their favorite play. Wilkerson gets a nice block on Greg Carr, springs it. Hustling over Tommy Powell to help on the tackle. Johnny Jones playing hurt, showing a lot of courage. 57 yards. He's had six straight 100-yard performances. Trying to get it again today. Here's Jones again. And a few more out across the 45 and 46. And Thomas with the tackle this time. Johnny Jones is a senior from Munford, Tennessee. Leads the SEC in rushing coming into the game. Number two in the nation. Averages 6.1 yards every time he carries the ball. Has a bruised left shoulder. Second down six. Jones again. Another close to a first down. Let's see where they spot the ball. May have to bring the sticks in. Ben Thomas with his sixth tackle of the afternoon, number 91 for Auburn. But looks, Tim, like they're going to run Jones more. You can see it looks, I don't know, is it looks like his shoulder is hurting him. I'm sure it is bothering him. Uh, against Army last year, he had a real problem. Last week, excuse me, he had a real problem with it. And it's the shoulder that he uses to fend off uh, would-be tacklers. And you need to be able to accelerate that forearm up through a tackler. And he's having a hard time driving people off him. But he's a gutty competitor. He's used to carrying the ball 30 to 40 times a game. A little chess move there. Auburn sent in five defensive backs. Sent, Tennessee sent in more meat to try to run on the wider Auburn defense. As it's third and short yardage. Once again, a big play from number 40, Arthur Johnson. Tennessee doesn't get the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. Losing about a yard on the play. Oh, what a game that young man is having. 
see him blitzing through a hole between the guard and the tackle. It's the running back before he has an opportunity to reach the line. After the Miami game, Coach Dye talked to the defense, and he said, there's only two of you that are playing with the intensity that we need to win football games at Auburn, and that was Tommy Powell and Arthur Johnson. It'll be fourth down, too. Colt would end the punt. Gainis is back about his 10 for Auburn. Oakwood puts it up very, very high. Gainis fair technically the crowd of the 18. As Tim Foley pointed out so accurately in the first half, no wonder you can't return the ball. Tennessee gets all 11 men down there before that ball comes down. The Auburn Tigers happy at the moment, leading 16-3. This is Turner Network TV. Quite a few Tennessee fans have made the trek from wherever they may live to Auburn, Alabama, the loveliest village on the plains, to watch Auburn take a 16-3 lead over Tennessee. There's a look at the quarterback comparison. About the same in terms of yardage game. Auburn ball, first and ten. Here's Brett Fulwer. upfield and gets your yardage goes all the way to the 46 yard line tackled by Tom Powell here's Doug Matthews running back coach for Tennessee one thing that Major said about Jones was that he just doesn't have a lot of wasted motion he's a north-south runner a little wiggle and then toward the goal post he goes second down for Tennessee from the 46 of the volunteers third quarter action from Jersey Stadium in August Jones again avoids one tackler about a yard out of it. Ben McCurdy and Jim Bone. Number 51, Bone, started the first game of the year for Auburn at linebacker. Injured his knees coming off of that injury. He's a senior and is going to play a little today. You see him right there in the middle of the huddle. He is a key defensive player for Auburn, and he's coming off the knee. Johnny Majors hoping he can get the third down conversion this time. The last time it was third down inches for Tennessee. Big play by Arthur Johnson, and the balls had to punt. This time, Tennessee's got them all spread. Single set back is 35, William Howard. Robinson. It's complete to McGee. Look out. McGee out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Number four, Briggs finally collared him. 37-yard pass completion. Robinson held the ball, he ripped it away from him and then put on his tipsy doodle and down the field he goes. Briggs saves the score. Second catch of the day for McGee, total the 47 yards, first down 10, volunteers at the 15 of Auburn. Here's Charles Wilson. from Pritchard, Alabama, who backs up Johnny Jones. You wonder why Wilson might be in there in this situation. Let's see if we see anything about Johnny Jones on the sideline. They're calling plays on the line of scrimmage, Bob, and I think once again the fullback had a difficult time hearing the call. He went the wrong way. It was a lead toss into the sideline. The fullback went to the strong side. Johnny Jones is not in the game. It is second down now. Under pressure, into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee! Joey Clink scales with the reception, his first touchdown of the year. Favorite pattern by 
quarterback down in here, a little fade on the sideline. The ball perfectly thrown by Robinson. Briggs in good shape, cannot get to the ball to make the play. Joey Clayscale, number three after spring practice, fought his way into a starting position. Pulls in six points. Tennessee. And all of a sudden, we have a ball game. 16 to 9, Auburn leading Tennessee with 8.33 to go in the third quarter from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. With the point after it, 16 to 10, Tennessee trailing. And watch Ben Thomas here put pressure on Tony Robinson. Number 91, Thomas. Make that number 98, 98 Williams. Excuse Gerald me. Williams. Moving up through there. He got a face full of Williams, and that looks like John Daly, number 96. We know it wasn't Ben Thomas, <laughs> contrary to earlier reports. Auburn leads 16 to 10 with 8.32 to go in the third quarter. Brett Fullwood will stand back on his own goal line to take the Fuad Reves kickoff. Last time the ball came down to Arthur Johnson, he returned it out to the 30. So we've seen a whole lot more of Johnny Jones to open the third quarter, but then Jones was out for the key plays that got that touchdown for Tennessee. Here's Fullwood. Averages 31 yards when he returns kicks. This time, out to about the 25-yard line. Not a great return on that one. Auburn takes over. Joe Cooper with the tackle for the Volunteers. Now, Auburn is not having a problem moving the football, really. The Tennessee defense is playing well, but Auburn's moving the ball. It's just a matter of holding on to it. Four turnovers, one interception, three fumbles, two fumbles by Brent Fullwood. One on the goal line, another one after about a 25-yard run. to about the 33-yard line. So the Tennessee defense is just chewing gum and bailing wire here today. Alvin Tolles, their excellent inside linebacker, went out with an injury, but 54 Dale Jones has been coming up with some big plays. Lavoisier Fisher has come in at one of the linebacker spots to play well today, as has Carl Zander. A lot of injuries for the Volunteers on defense. Second down, three. Auburn, this is Colwood. Down, I believe he got it up to about the 38-yard line. It's just good, powerful uh, football here. Carl Zander, number 45. Lavoisier Fisher, number 40, taking on the block of Jeff Lott. Big offensive right guard for Auburn. Pat Dye was an All-American guard. Washington pitched the ball out. Looks like he was looking for Fullwood or Collins. They both went that way. The ball went right between them. Fortunate for Auburn that it went out of bounds. As we watch the two halfbacks run to the right, I think that the man that's supposed to receive that pitch there is Fullwood, number 22. He tossed it toward Kyle Collins, but Collins, I think, is supposed to be a blocker. Tennessee had covered the receiver. Washington's next move is to pitch the ball back. A quarterback playing up could have had goal lines and headlines there for Tennessee. Here's Fullwood again. They're trying to strip him, but he breaks open. Inside Tennessee territory for the first down. Another big second down long play. An 18-yard ramble by Brent Fullwood, who's got a lot of yards on the day, over 100 now. Little setup draw. Saw Dale Jones blitzing to the top. A missed tackle that Fullwood broke. Turns it into a nice gain for Auburn. Auburn doesn't have to get too cute with Tennessee. They just stay with the straight rock'em sock'em block. From the 48-yard line of the Volunteers, Washington all day to throw. Incomplete, he was looking for 38 Collis Campbell. Covered by 26, Vernon Bass, the freshman, filling in for the injured Tommy Sims for Tennessee. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Second down, 10, Auburn. From the 48 of Tennessee, we have a 16 to 10 Auburn lead. 6.52 to go, third quarter. Jordan Hare Stadium. Here's the wishbone for you. Played quite well by Tennessee. 
see number 38, Paulus Campbell, chased out of bounds by number 51, Reggie McKenzie, the Tennessee left outside linebacker, short of the first down. Paulus Campbell converted fullback. Johnny Majors on the move. His team fighting their way back. And this is not a friendly place to fight your way back. We've got some Tennessee fans here, but a lot more of that orange is Auburn, Auburn orange than Tennessee, for sure. Johnny Majors among the nation's top 20 football coaches and wins. Has a 563 winning position, uh, percentage. Third down, short yardage. It is complete to Trey Gaines, who stepped out of bounds at the 32-yard line after he got the first down. Vernon Bass, the man who forced Gaines out of bounds. Gaines is a sophomore from Cairo, Georgia. Just a quick out pattern to the strong side. Vernon Bass giving Gaines a little bit too much room. After the catch is made, Bass should be making contact. Gaines, a clever little receiver, ducks under and almost breaks it all away. Little is right, 5'10", 170. First and 10, Auburn, from the 32. Ah! At Washington. Incomplete. I might mention, as I watched that pass intended for Carlos Campbell, this has been a relatively penalty-free ball game. There have been two penalties on Auburn. No penalties on Tennessee in this entire ball game. Last week, Kentucky Tulane, I believe we had 23 penalties, didn't we? We had a bunch. In this series, Auburn has trying to is trying to isolate Dale Jones on a running back. He's taking that pattern toward the sideline and bending it up the field, hoping to get a big gainer by putting it in over the linebacker's head. On a second down, 10, misdirection play here. Played well by Tennessee, and Kyle Collins goes down. Close to the line of scrimmage, Vernon Bass came up to make the play from his right cornerback position. 6.20 to go third quarter. It'll be another third down and long for Auburn, but they've been successful converting those third down situations this afternoon. Six out of 11 times so far today. One thing we want to do is make sure we say hi to Wanda Dye. Wanda Dye just to come out of a body cast. She had a congenital defect, hip defect, and Pat wanted to make sure we said hi to her. That he, she's got the best attitude of anyone he knows. On the third, down eight. Penalty markers go down. Auburn showing the first down. It was Tommy Ag tackled by Darren Miller, the middle guard for Tennessee, who's having himself a pretty good ball game against this tough wishbone of Auburn. Al Ford, the man in the white hat, is the referee for this game, and he'll tell us what the flag's about. Against Auburn, Tennessee, no doubt. Well, we'll have to wait. Tennessee, probably in more normal circumstances, depending on field position, would reject that. But because Auburn's in field goal range, Tennessee will have to think about it, and that's what Carl Zander's doing down there right now. He's a heady man who makes the decisions out there for Tennessee. He's going to take the penalty. Let me assure you, Bob, you saw him looking toward the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to take the credit or blame for that decision. He's looking over there to the people with the wisdom. Okay, let's watch. That offense is holding. Ten-yard penalty. Still third down. Raleigh McKenzie, the senior from Knoxville, may be the guilty man. Let's watch and see. A.G. Cups, cuts it in behind the block of Jeff Lott. I can't tell if it's Cam Bureau or Howard in there. It's third down, 18 for Auburn now from the 40. Washington to forward. That running room. Short of the first down. Dale Jones made the stop. So it'll be fourth down, but because of the success on that... It's going to be at about the same place that the penalty was, and Auburn will send in their field goal unit here. About a 43-yard attempt coming off the foot here of Robert McGinty, who is a freshman kicker, replacing Al Del Greco, who was last year's outstanding kicker for Auburn, who graduated. McGinty is five out of seven so far this year. Neptune Beach, Florida. It is no good. another backyard battle in the SEC. This is Turner Network Television. There's the Alabama Vanderbilt score in Tuscaloosa, second quarter action. It is North Carolina leading Kansas 10 to nothing. Florida, a 
ahead of Mississippi State. Another Southeastern Conference matchup. That's only a first quarter score. And Georgia Tech leading Clemson six to nothing in Atlanta, Georgia. Clemson last minute losers to Georgia last week. And the Clemson Tigers are trailing Georgia Tech in Atlanta. We've got a beauty on our hands here. Auburn 16, Tennessee 10. Volunteers ball from their own 26-yard line. Quick opener right over the middle. It's William Howard, the fullback. I don't see Johnny Jones in there still. Johnny Jones came out to begin the third quarter as you look at the time remaining in the third quarter and ran the ball very successfully for the Volunteers. Looked as though his shoulder was bothering him. We have not seen him since late in the last Tennessee drive. And Tennessee has gone to double tight ends, two wide receivers, and a single setback on second down eight from the 28. Robinson with good protection. Incomplete at the 49, going to Jeff Smith, the tight end once again, Vic Beasley covering. And there is Johnny Jones, and I think that tells the story for the Tennessee Heisman candidate. He went out of the game with 73 yards in 15 carries and looks to be hurting. He does look to be hurting, Bob, and he lasted longer than I thought he would last. He took a beating from this Auburn defense, hung in there valiantly, but they're going to have to go the rest of the way without him. And probably opened up the Auburn defense for the successful passing game that got the Tennessee touchdown. Certainly right there. Tennessee, third down eight from their own 28. Three wide receivers. One setback. Incomplete. He was looking for 87 feet scales. The play was open, but Robinson simply missed it. Let's go to Atlanta now for the college football update. Surprise, surprise from the Courier Dome in Syracuse. A 40-yard bomb from Todd Norley to Mike Ziani. Look at this catch. It's good for six points. Syracuse 10, Nebraska 7. An upset in the making, Bob and Tim. Fifth punt of the afternoon, averaging less than 40 yards today. That wasn't a very good one either. This is Gaines has an opportunity for a return. He's slippery, as you can see, out of bounds at the 44. Tackle made by Kelly Ziegler. Good field position for Auburn, leading 16-10. So Tennessee had an opportunity to reverse that field position, but with Johnny Jones on the bench, couldn't get the ball moving. And now Auburn has it again. They still had a chance even with John on the bench. I think that Robinson delivered the ball on time to Jeff Smith. He just couldn't hang on to the football before he slipped out of bounds. Die on the sideline wants to put Tennessee away. They want to get six points on the board on this drive. Here's Fullwood, number 22. Oh, what a hit. Oh, my. Looks like 29 Clark delivered that blow, the senior free safety. Excuse me, I get carried away when I when I hear it all the way up here. Clark's still feeling it. A great hit here by Clark, coming up from his free safety position. He's run about 10 yards. He's filling the running lane here, and watch this hit coming up. Bang! Just drove Fullwood back. Fullwood's out of the game. Campbell is in in place of him. Tommy Agee gets the first down on a quick opener on the right side. Inside the 45 to the 44-yard line, Kelly Ziegler, the freshman linebacker, with a stop for Tennessee. 3-12 to go, third quarter. Al Ford, our referee today. The officials have kept this. They, well, both teams, first of all, have played relatively errorless football. And Auburn just dominating possession of the ball, as you can see from the first down statistics. Here's a pitch to Collis. Campbell finds his way. Drags him out of bounds. That popped open and had the free safety not been playing center field. Auburn could have taken it into the end zone. Out of bounds at the 28. It's unbalanced to the right. As you see Freddie Wagan on the end of the line of scrimmage just walling some people off to the outside. Middleton cutting off the inside. Clark, great tackle by Vince Clark. Just grab a hold of something. If you're the last man, grab a hold of something and drag him out of bounds. First down 10 from the 28-yard line. Auburn leading 16 to 10, 252 to go third quarter. Washington has a man out here. It's Gaines. Complete and out of bounds at the 18. Close to the first down. Auburn just driving right downfield. They started with good field position. 
that Trey Gaines in a football uniform doesn't look like a whole lot, but he gets the job done. He's a heady player. He's the best combination blocker receiver that Auburn has. Trey Gaines. And Pat Washington goes to 8 out of 15 for 82 yards on the day with one interception. It is second down and one, short of the first down, double tight ends for the Auburn Tigers. Penalty marker down. I did not see if the 30-second clock had not run down. It may be a procedure call against Auburn. That is the call. And that could be a big one. It was second down one. That'll make it second down six. And Auburn, uh, however, except for penalties and turnovers and mistakes. And Pat Dye said that to us, Tim, fully before the uh, game. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure. It's top in. That Auburn's biggest enemy so far has been Auburn in terms of offense. Exactly right. But it's a young football team, not a senior on that starting offensive unit. Now second down six from just outside the 23-yard line of Tennessee. Here's Fullwood. Gets the blocking. Short of the first down. Just inside the 20. Tackle made by Darren Miller. His seventh tackle on the afternoon. Miller came into this game after three games at middle guard for Tennessee with 12 total tackles. And he's almost up to that number in this game alone. But Kyle Collins from the strong halfback position really sticks it in there when he has to block. That time he was on Joe Coker. Joe gave him a little bit of a headache on that one. Auburn has rushed for more than 300 yards in this game. Third down, long one. Here's Kyle Collins. First down. makes a defensive back miss strides it into the end zone for six points that's his second touchdown of the year rushing he used to hang around the interviews when Bo uh, Jackson was getting interviewed and uh, he'd kind of yell in hey Bo what do you think about the Cuban Missile Crisis hey Bo what do you think <laughs> and they just had a real good relationship they just laugh and smile at each other well now Collins is going to be getting some of the press maybe Eddie Graham can pick on him Pat Dye talking to his offensive coordinator, Jack Crow. Pat Washington in the background there. And as you said earlier, Tim, the injury to Bo Jackson has caused a lot of these Auburn players, particularly the running backs, to step forward. Now Fullwood has to produce. Now Kyle Collins has to produce. Now Campbell has to become active. A.G., Reggie Ware. And it may make them overall a very, very good football team. And these are young players. Auburn's uh, lining up as though they may be going for two here. They lead right now 22 to 10. They were discussing addition, basic math. And Tim will explain why they're going for the two points here to make it, if they get it, 24 to 10 instead of 23 to 10. Tim? You can explain. Go ahead. <laughs> 14 points for us, huh? You're the, you're the Purdue graduate, you know. It's not going to matter from the Auburn viewpoint because Washington couldn't get the play underway. Xander made the tackle, and it remains 22 to 10. Well, if Tennessee scores a touchdown, it'll be 17. Then three would be 20, and another field goal would be 23-22. They were probably thinking of it like that. The end zone, look at the touchdown. Fullwood gets the block. Out in front, Steve Wallace walls off a Tennessee player. And then just Collins puts a move on Vernon Bass, which produces six points. And then he kind of fiddles around with the ball a little bit just to make things interesting. I, I bet that that man right there, Mr. Pat Dye, may point out to Collins to keep that ball tucked under his arm until he's well past the goal line. I have some other scores. You see the Auburn-Tennessee score here in the third quarter. Some other action around the nation today. Iowa leading Illinois 14-3. That's in the second half. Wake Forest and Maryland tied up in the third quarter. 
West Virginia leading Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh's having their problems and Alabama leading Vanderbilt 10 9 in the third quarter so that's a real close one at Tuscaloosa Alabama's homecoming Vanderbilt has never won there this may be their best opportunity ever Vanderbilt 3 and 0 going into that game and Alabama 1 and 2. To the 12 yard line hit hard by number four Alvin Briggs and also on the play is number three Kevin Porter. So it'll be volunteer ball once again they have to start their drive if you look at that scoring drive with the Tigers they had to only go 56 yards well if Tennessee's to be successful now they have to go 88 yards Tennessee has not had field position today with the exception of the Auburn turnovers. Charles Wilson, the freshman tailback, playing in place of the injured Johnny Jones out to the 15. Greg Carr made the stop for Auburn. That's Carr's first official tackle of the day. He was Auburn's leader in tackles last year. Time remaining in the third quarter. They call him uh, crunch number two after Mike Cohen, who is a longtime Miami Dolphin linebacker and Auburn graduate. They called Mike Captain Crunch, and they called Greg Carr crunch number two. Play fake and Robinson with time. Gonna have to run it out of bounds. Not much happening for this volunteer offense. McCurdy chased him out of bounds. When you get Johnny Jones out of there, a man who produces so much, and you have young quarterbacks like Robinson and Dickey, we have to point out, I think, probably a, a key situation for Tennessee that becomes something the coaches don't deal with now because it's history. But you have to think about the loss of Alan Cockrell to professional baseball. He would have been back for Tennessee for his senior season, but now Robinson and Dickey have to fill in the gap by Cockrell, and it's been a struggle. There's no question about it, Bob. And injuries have played a major factor, too, that have put more weight on Tony Robinson's shoulder. Incomplete was looking for McGee. McGee was covered very closely by Arthur Johnson, number 40. Also out there was 85 Bill Eichholz. Another thing that happens when Jones leaves the game is McCurdy and Carr get a little bit more depth. And they're not sticking, they're not so anxious to stick their nose up there when they fake that lead draw. They're getting nice drops, and it makes it that much tougher for Tony Robinson to find an opening. Colquitt has not got the distance on his punting game here today that he'd like to have. He was an All-American in 82. Disappointing season last year. And not a great day for him today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's a penalty marker down. Was there a fair catch signaled by Gaines? It was Bruce Garrett, 84, who made the hit, a sophomore from Memphis. didn't see the fair catch call for that's for sure we'll get the explanation in a moment while I remind you that this telecast is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Southeastern Conference and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience any publication reproduction rebroadcast or retransmission of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference and Turner Broadcasting is prohibited and now here's Al Ford player is, is within a two-yard circle. You've got to give the front receiver two yards with the catch the ball. Team, first down. And a very close call. First Was he in the two-yard circle before the ball got there or not? And that's the official has said yes, so that's the penalty. First down, 10. Auburn. Washington, hold down from behind. At about 46-yard line. Tackler, number 97, Tony Simmons. Talking to the offensive line there, Dave Douglas. That's Tony Simmons who is down for Tennessee, the man who made the tackle. It was Phil Fulmer that was doing the talking to his offensive line for Tennessee, trying to coordinate some blocking schemes. You know, Bob, I think it, an idea and having covered a lot of punts, sometimes you're fighting off a blocker. You don't see the fair catch. And you're coming downfield, and you don't know whether the guy's called for it or not. 
or he may throw his hand up inadvertently and you're not sure whether the official thinks that's a fair catch call or not signal or not if they could station uh, an official close to the man that's catching the ball and if the guy signaled for fair catch let the official throw his hand straight up in the air so there's no question that could have been a big play for Tennessee because you've seen it and those folks out watching it out there in TV land have seen it before. The special teams coming in, making a big play, shaking the ball loose. Tim, we want to go to our studios in Atlanta now. They got a good one going at Maryland. This is Rick Pedanjak, eight yards, good hard running. He gets into the end zone. Maryland back up on top, 24 to 17. And Simmons is back up here at Auburn, being aided off the field. 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We'd like to thank the sports information directors for both schools for their help in our preparation. As usual, they've done a great job. David Housel and Mike Hubbard here at Auburn and all their assistants. Assistant Athletic Director Oval James and Haywood Harris, Bud Ford, Rick Redding from Tennessee. Give us a lot of help. We appreciate it. Second down eight, Auburn. Intended for number 14, Freddie Wagan, incomplete. Vernon Bass covering on the play. Vernon thrown under a lot of pressure here today with the loss of an excellent player to an ankle injury, Tommy Sims, last week against Army. Tennessee lost their cornerback over there from Americas, and uh, Bass has had to step in. Yeah, first start as a cornerback. Vernon can take heart. He will never have to start for the first time again. I hope this is behind him. Third down, eight. All day for Washington to throw. It's picked up. and a nine-yard return on the interception by Carl Zander. Petty football by Zander. As Washington rolls to his left, he's trying to get it back to Gaines, who comes all the way across the field. Zander had shrunken down his zone, pursued Gaines, and was in position to make the catch. He's come up with two big turnovers on defense. He's stepping up and making up for the loss of Alvin Tolles. Tennessee with good field position here. 13 seconds to go third quarter from the 42. Robinson. 96 is John Daly. Down to the 44. 13 yard return by Daly and it is, I don't want it, you can have it. And now Auburn back to the ball with two seconds to go in the third quarter. Trying to get it to McGee down the middle of the field. Auburn defense has that area covered. Fires it back to the tight end. Daly sitting underneath. Picks it off. Heartbreaker for Tennessee's defense who's fought to get that offense the ball in good field position. First down 10 from the 44. Fullwood carrying the ball. Care correction, Kyle Collins carrying the ball. For the Auburn Tigers. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Auburn 22, Tennessee 10 from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. This is Turner Network Television. And the ACC North Carolina Tar Heels getting well against Kansas today, 20 to nothing at the half. Georgia Tech shutting out Clemson in the second quarter, 14 to nothing in Atlanta, Georgia. 6-3, Virginia Tech leading Virginia. That's a second quarter score. And here it's Auburn 22, Tennessee 10. 75,000 in that neighborhood, <laughs> in our neighborhood here in Auburn. Washington on the first down. Make that the second down. And Brett Fullwood driven out of bounds hard. Not much gain on the play. Reggie McKenzie with the defensive play on Fullwood. Fullwood's been a workhorse this afternoon. He has 125 yards on the day. and. That man, Reggie McKenzie, has been active. Six tackles so far. Look at that difference in rushing. Johnny Jones, 57 yards. That's all of Tennessee's rushing, by the way. Auburn, 328. And Johnny Jones is on the bench for Tennessee. Third and eight. Washington. Just throws it away wisely. He wanted to go to forward on the left side when he couldn't find anybody down the middle. Under pressure, threw it out of bounds. On the fourth down now with the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. 
And number five, Lewis Colbert, comes in to punt as number 10, Washington, comes to the sideline. He's eight out of 18 for 82 yards and two interceptions today. Colbert's a great story, Bob. You know, his mother worked two jobs to pay for his education at Auburn because she knew he wanted to walk on. He's got a congenital defect in his foot, kind of a club foot, and, uh, and he earned the scholarship here and has been an important part of Auburn's special team development. Drives this one out of bounds. Tries to get it out of bounds inside the 20 and does. It's out of bounds at the 12-yard line to Tennessee once again. Thanks to the job of that fine young man, will have to start inside their own 20-yard line. Fourth quarter action. This is Turner Network Television. There's Johnny Majors. Needs to get something going. 14 minutes, 38 seconds remaining in this game. It's Auburn 22, Tennessee 10. Biggest cheer of the day, or one of the larger cheers just went up here at Auburn when they announced that Vanderbilt is leading Alabama 15 to 13 in the second half of that game in Tuscaloosa. And a new quarterback for Tennessee, Daryl Dickey, completes the first pass for a gain of only a yard or two to Tim McGee. So Tony Robinson out, Daryl Dickey in, and that's apparently the change that Johnny Majors feels might help Tennessee get some offense. They've had none thus far. I'm sure that shoulder has been hurting Tony Robinson. Whenever you have a separated shoulder, it takes a period of weeks for that thing to heal, especially if you're a quarterback when you're rotating your shoulder in the fashion that a quarterback does. Darryl Dickey's a heady player. His dad was a head coach a major college team, so he knows what's going on in the field. Second down eight. It's complete to the tight end, to the 25-yard line. First down, Tennessee. Johnson tackling Jeff Smith. Make that foul. There's Jeff Smith, number 81. Nine, yeah, 81. He's had himself a pretty good game. Great for a quarterback to know his limitations. I'm sure Dickey doesn't feel he has the big arm. He's just got to maintain possession of the football, keep it away from that powerful Auburn wishbone, and move it down the field. It is first down 10, Tennessee, trailing Auburn 22, 10, 13, 40, remaining in this game. From the Volunteer 25, handoff to the fullback. He's out to the 31-yard line, William Howard. Gerald Williams and Powell with the tackles. And an update on that Vanderbilt-Alabama game. It is Vanderbilt 16, Alabama 13 in the third quarter at Tuscaloosa. But Johnny Majors has very little concern about that score right now as do these volunteers. They're down 12 to Auburn. Second down, four. Howard. Penalty marker down. Gerald Williams with the tackle for Auburn. Oh, Penalty against Tennessee. Want to take just a moment to wish a happy 38th anniversary to the parents of Rick Rayford, one of our fine, outstanding crew members with our broadcast, Donna and Dick Rayford, 38 years of happy marriage. Except for some problems Rick caused them along the way. <laughs> There's the penalty, and here's Al Ford with the announcement. Offensive holding, 10-yard penalty. Second down, still. Second and 14. Now second down 14, as you heard Al Ford say, and the ball is placed just outside the 20-yard line. Beautiful day for football here in Auburn, Alabama. The sky is becoming a little cloudy now. Charles Wilson, William Howard in the backfield for the volunteers. He wanted to get the ball to Charles Wil Wilson, number 32. It slid right through his arms, and as you can see in that picture, McGee and uh, Eicholtz were all in the general area. Third down, 14 coming up. Wilson talking to Doug Matthews on the sideline. Gonna have to figure out a way to get the ball to Timmy McGee. Obviously, Auburn many times is double covering McGee because they know how dangerous he is, too. Big third down play for the Volunteers as they trail by 12, third and 14. Pressure on Dickey. He is short of the first down. Avoid the big loss, though. Powell and King combining on the tackle. Tennessee will have to give it up again. Here comes Colquitt in. There's a 12-yard run, two yards short of the first down by Darrell Dickey. 
On the far side of the field, it's Timmy McGee going against David King. Superior Auburn cornerback. Can't work his way free, so Dickey takes it out of the pocket. He's short of the first down. Fair catch signal for by Gaines. One of the Tennessee players was within that two-yard circle again. So there's another penalty against Tennessee. Number seven, Chris White was in there. We'll be right back to Auburn, Alabama. This is David Bell of Georgia Tech. His first field goal of the afternoon from 25 yards out. A little bit later on, he adds a 31-yard field goal. And Georgia Tech is at it again at Grant Field, 21 to nothing over Clemson. Quite a surprise, Bob. Unbelievable, and there you saw the Georgia Tech score. Here's Maryland over Wake Forest, 24 to 17. Syracuse leading Nebraska. That's one you wouldn't have guessed either, although Syracuse improved this year, and it's in the fourth quarter. And Texas leading Penn State in the third quarter, 21 to 3. Don Lindsay's done a great job of that defense at Georgia Tech. Huh? Shutting out Clemson. That's almost hard to believe, but you can believe it, folks. On the first down, A.G. tackled by Carl Sander. We have 11.48 to go in this game. Auburn leads Tennessee by a score of 22 to 10. Tennessee can get nothing going on offense here today, but Auburn has turned the ball over five times, so this could really have been an Auburn blowout today. Auburn has totally dominated control of the ball from the very beginning of this football game. Stop for Tennessee. It is a workhorse with power. 14 yards on the carry by A.G. He now has 53 on the day. What, what's the power in this young man's leg? Great job of blocking by the front. Jeff Lott just gets a blowout block in, at, from his right guard position. But look at this leg drive. Keeps his feet going. He rushed for he rushed for over half their yardage in the final drive in the Sugar Bowl against Michigan. Washington on the option. Likes to keep it and elects to get hit by Carl Zander. David Housel, the sports information director for Auburn, standing in the press box just on the other side. Is that's not David there? That's War Eagle Five. <laughs> As you look at the mascot, David coming over to ask us if everything's all right. One of the finer sports information directors in the country. He took good care of us last night. Took us out to eat at a place called the Gazebo, and Norm and Rex Barrington put on a spread for us, huh? Wonderful evening. Second down nine in Auburn at 43 of Tennessee. To the 40, just inside the 40-yard line goes Ed Graham, tackled by Darren Miller. Graham, number 21, is a senior from Bayou La Butra. Johnny talking to Doug Matthews, trying to come up with something. Figuring out a way to get the ball to those wide receivers so they can score in a hurry. This is third down six. Big play for the Tennessee defense here. If they want to have an opportunity to get it again, it's going to be a tough play. Washington with time incomplete. Excellent play by the Tennessee defense. Jeff Parks was the intended receiver. Reggie McKenzie was out there keying the play, but Tennessee strung it out forced Washington to keep it. Then when he wanted to get rid of it, they had good coverage on. So the punter will come in, Lewis Colbert, once again, for Auburn, leading 22-10 with 9.47 to go in this game. The loser of this game, by the way, historically, has never gone on to win the Southeastern Conference Championship. So these teams look at it as a championship-type game when they play every year. from Montgomery number 93 got down there a 38 yard punt by Colbert an excellent job of punting and coverage and Tennessee will have to line up in the end zone again just watch this this is Turner Network Television This is Wilson. 
good drive out across the five to the seven. Tennessee gets a little bit of breathing room. They have been bottled up in their own end zone virtually all day. Johnny Majors, what do you do as a head coach when you have the injuries? You just have to keep trying to find somebody to step in there and pick up the slack. And that's what Majors is trying to do this afternoon when he substituted Dickey for Robinson. Tennessee was shut out in the first and thus far shut out here in the fourth quarter. Auburn spread their scoring out pretty evenly across the day. Dickey. Intercepted by Alvin Briggs at the 24-yard line. The sophomore from Greenville, Alabama, with a great athletic play. He simply left the ground, became airborne, and made a great catch. He's shaken up on the, on the interception. What a catch. Defensive backs aren't supposed to be able to catch like this. Alvin was a high school quarterback. Used exclusively as a nickelback last year against Alabama, and Georgia, and Michigan. What a catch. Defensive backs are coached to catch the ball at its highest point. Look at him play the football. Well-thrown ball by Dickey, but just an incredible catch by Alvin Briggs. We have an update on the Vanderbilt-Alabama game with 14 minutes left in the game at Tuscaloosa. Vanderbilt 23, Alabama 13. Vanderbilt has never won in Tuscaloosa. Auburn just keeps powering the ball up the middle. Tommy Agee. And now let's go to Atlanta for an update on that game. Thank you, Bob. Here's how it happens. Quarterback Kirk Page to Chuck Scott for the touchdown. It is 23-13. This is Alabama's homecoming, but so far not a very happy one. Back to Bob. And here Auburn leads 22-10. Eight minutes, 22 seconds to go in the game. Second down, seven. Tigers. That's Brent Fullwood, who's had himself an excellent day running the ball also. Fullwood now has 132 yards on the afternoon. The man who stepped in there for the injured Bo Jackson, filling Bo Jackson's right halfback position. I'd like to point something out, too. As Dickey threw that ball, he had to throw it over the top of a young man who's got excellent depth on the drop. That young man, Arthur Johnson. He played himself a fine, fine football game on defense for Auburn. Pat Washington has two interceptions on the day. He's 8 out of 19 for 82 yards. A youngster, junior from Mobile, and Pat Dye said he is developing a little bit in this very complicated job of being a wishbone quarterback. It's more than passing ability. It's more than, I guess, more than anything, it's instinct. And to develop instinct, obviously, can take a great deal of time. But Pat Dye believes in this young man. And that's not to say that he doesn't like Mike Mann, the senior backup quarterback from Silicaga, or a freshman. You'll be hearing from, from Auburn, uh, no doubt, one of these days, Jeff Berger. But for right now, number 10, Pat Washington, is the man for the Auburn Tigers. Dye is also proud of the fact that 10 of his players, see Iowa pulling away from Illinois in the fourth quarter, 10 of his players off this Auburn team that graduated are now playing professional football. Look at that, Mississippi State leading Florida 12-7 in the second quarter. Galen Hall taking over for Charlie Pell. That's his first game as head coach at Florida. Mississippi State has a tough team this year. Third down one. Up the middle they go. First down is successful. Reggie Ware carrying Simmons with the tackle. By the way, next week, we'll be following this Auburn Tiger football team to Oxford, Mississippi for our SEC telecast. We will have Auburn and Ole Miss. Simmons a little slow getting up down there, number 97. And Ole Miss is playing Tulane today. We'll get you a report on how they're doing a little bit later. We'll have that game at 11.15 Central Time, 12.15 Eastern Time next week for you from Oxford, Mississippi, one of the most beautiful campuses in the nation. Auburn certainly joins that group, too. On a first and ten, Washington. Plenty of time. Incomplete. Trying to go into the end zone at number 82, Parks. Incomplete. 7.46 to go in the game. Nice block by Steve Wilson there, pulling out in front of Pat Washington, preventing Dale Jones from breaking that play up. And going into the game, Clayton Buford, number 11, a senior from Palatka, Florida. They have three fine split ends here. Trey Gaines, Clayton Buford, Freddie Wagan. One senior, one freshman, one sophomore. 
young Auburn football team. They start no seniors on offense. Second down, 10. Brent Fullwood. Not much inside the 10, maybe just an inch or two. Just to mention once again, in case you missed it earlier, a very surprising score, I'm sure, to a lot of folks. Georgia Tech leading Clemson 21 to nothing. We saw, and you saw if you watched our TNT and TBS sports telecast of the Alabama Tech game that Tech looked to be for real this year, and now they're handing it to their ACC opponent, Clemson. Last time they were in this situation, they handed the ball to Kyle Collins. They've got Gainis in. He's a good blocker. Eddie Graham also in there, shifting parts to the wide side of the field. It's third and seven. There's Collins again. Collins gets it in the end zone again. Coach Tim Foley just made another good call. Auburn drives into the volunteer end zone. Eddie Graham, if you can pick it up, gets a beautiful block on Joe Cooper, and then Collins beats a defender, falls into the end zone. 12 points for Kyle Collins, Mr. Enthusiasm for Auburn University. Here's McGinney with the point after big number 75, Steve Wilson was certainly taking up space out there from left guard, 280 pounds on that touchdown run of nine yards also. And here at Auburn, Alabama, it's Auburn 29, Tennessee 10. This is Turner Network Television. A favorite, a favorite thing for wide receivers to do is not to block, and especially from in there. Little Trey Gaines gets a double-team block on Dale Jones, helps open up the hole for Kyle Collins. Good effort. You know, earlier I mentioned that Trey didn't look like much in a uniform. Now, I didn't mean he wasn't, wasn't pretty. I don't want to get his mother upset. I mean it that he's diminutive he's not that big and uh, but he throws it around doesn't he he's a gutty little competitor 23 yards after the interception minute 51 consumed six plays Collins with his second touchdown of the day and the Auburn running back seemed to be filling in and replaced the missing Bo Jackson this gets off and hit down and come out to the 20 yard line 659 remaining in this game it is Auburn 29 to 10 and uh, you can just about put this one in the book for Auburn unless some unbelievable things were to happen to Tennessee because the Volunteers simply don't have it on offense today. Tony Robinson has a sore shoulder. He came out. Dickey came in at quarterback. Johnny Jones re-injured his shoulder. He came out. The Volunteers have gone with one setback much of the day. And, of course, when they do that, Auburn lays back with their defense and goes into a lot of coverage, pressures the quarterback with that defensive line, and thus Tennessee has been highly ineffective here today playing some second teamers in some key positions. This is Dickey. It is complete at the 35-yard line. The first down pass was David King, who put a real hit on Tim McGee, number 88, the junior from Cleveland. And he's another receiver in their long line of great receivers. Watch this move. Breaks down in the yard, back to the ball, and oh, gets his feet down inside before the dancer, David King, delivers a blow. What team, college team in the nation, had three first-round wide receivers? The answer is Tennessee. Hancock, Galt, and Duncan. So that's not counting Stanley Morgan, who used to run by me on a consistent basis, uh, basis when he's with the New England Patriots. First down, 10, Tennessee. Near the 40, and another tough hit by Hallman and Ben McCurdy. Let's see if Charles Wilson comes out of there. There he is, number 32. He just got swallowed up over there. He's from Pritchard, Alabama, playing up at the University of Tennessee. One of the things you notice when you look at the Tennessee recruiting is high school football does not produce the, the depth and quantity of high-quality players that a lot of states do. They produce some good ones, but not as many. Tennessee has to recruit all over, not just from Tennessee. So you see names from literally all over the country on this Tennessee roster. And down six volunteers from the 38. Dickey keeps the ball close to the first down, but goes out of bounds, being chased by 96 John Daly. I'd like to thank our spotter Kim Anderson doing a great job today. It's always tougher on 
Kim when we do the wishbone because of the slick ball handling, but he once again has risen to the challenge. And our spotter, of course, David Carroll. Tom Smith's our, there's Pat Dye, who helped us also. Tom Smith's our engineer, our engineer. No, our engineer is Cal Paulus. The Fonz would be upset if I said that. Tom's our director. Of course, Skip Ellison, the producer. Great job by everyone today. And there you go on the third down situation. Tennessee's only converted one out of every three. And they call timeout now. Have two timeouts remaining with 6.39 here. It's Auburn 29, Tennessee 10. And we're going to Atlanta for an update on college football. Thank you, Bob. And what an update it is. Top-ranked Nebraska facing Syracuse. Another touchdown by the Orangemen of Syracuse. Harold Gaden finds the end zone. Tom Osborne can't believe it. His team is now trailing 17-7. Just two minutes left. We'll have this game and others coming up right after the game on the Red Man Report. Back to Bob. What a day of upsets in the making, we might say. There's the time remaining in this game, 6:39. Auburn leading 29-10. Tech leading Clemson. And the last we heard, Vanderbilt was leading Alabama, although on this season, I don't know if you'd call that an upset, but people at Alabama would definitely call it an upset. Sure. Both Pat Dye and Johnny Majors, long-time winners in the field of coaching. It's funny listening to Pat Dye talk about push-starting his Volkswagen and driving to work for Bear Bryant with Howard Snellenberger, and Howard Snellenberger <laughs> asking him uh, if he'd ever heard of George Allen. This guy out in California offered him a job. <laughs> Howard Snellenberger ended up going out there, of course, and Pat Dye on the success of the premier college coach of the America today. Third down to Tennessee. There's a good job of tough inside running by William Howard, number 35. Tennessee gets the first down. You do know one thing about a Johnny Majors team is these volunteers don't quit. They have been frankly outmanned by Auburn today, virtually position by position. They're still hanging in there. Dickey driven out of bounds near midfield. Gain of about five before he went out at the 49-yard line. Dickey came in last week and played against Army when Tony Robinson was shaken up and was 14 of 24 for 167 yards passing the ball. As a junior from Gainesville, as Tim told you earlier, is the son of Doug Dickey, former Tennessee and Florida coach. It's interesting to see these sons starting to crop up now. Jackie Kemp's son uh, in L.A. And, and we saw Billy Neighbor's son playing for Alabama two weeks ago. Age. It's called old age on our part. So. It's tricky. Hold on hard by number 90, Kevin Green. Senior defensive end from Aniston, Alabama. That's what you can do when you know the team's down 29 to 10 and going to have to throw. These defensive ends just lick their chops. They do and lay back their ears. And this is what has changed in college football over the last 10 years. 10 years ago, you're not going to see a guy that's as big as green running down a quarterback. Those fellas that are 6'4 and 6'5 with 240 pounds and still have a tremendous speed. Kevin Green has two sacks on the day now, and Tennessee has called timeout again, and now Tennessee will have one timeout remaining. We just uh, got a further update from uh, the Auburn Sports Information Service here, the Vanderbilt-Alabama score with eight minutes remaining. Vanderbilt leading Alabama 23-13 to at Tuscaloosa. Vanderbilt has never defeated Alabama at Tuscaloosa, but do have a 10-point lead today. Vanderbilt went into that game. 3-0, and, oh, and Alabama 1-2. and two. It is homecoming for the Crimson Tide. So that's an interesting score. And we reported earlier that Syracuse is leading Nebraska, which is surprising a lot of folks. And it is Georgia Tech leading Clemson 21 to nothing. While we have the time out here, we're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. First quarter, Ole Miss and Tulane are scoreless. We'll have Ole Miss and Auburn on our telecast next week at noon Eastern time. Tulane and Ole Miss scoreless today. Following the game on most of these stations, we will have the football action report with video highlights of all of today's college football and all the scores with Craig Sager and Paul Hornick. We hope you'll stay tuned for that. 5.41 remaining here. 29 to 10, Auburn leading Tennessee. Third down, 18 volunteers. The fumble 
was fallen on by Tennessee. Gerald Williams hit the quarterback. Number 98 hit Daryl Dickey, but Tennessee maintains possession of the ball and will put it away now. Nothing you can say about it. Gerald Williams coming in from the backside once again causes a fumble. Caused a fumble earlier in the game that uh, resulted in a safety. Played himself a whale of a football game. Colquitt gets some hang, hang time on this one. Gaines is signaling fair catch at the 28. And while we're talking about Tennessee having problems offensively, that is not to overshadow the outstanding defensive job done by Auburn today. That defensive front line of Daly, Thomas, Holman, Williams, and Robinson all have made big contributions. McCurdy and Carr have been filling the hole. McCurdy particularly act active, had a sack and six tackles. And in the defensive backfield, Arthur Johnson, Tom Powell, those safeties that Pat Dye told us were so intense at their position at their game have in fact performed that way today. First and 10 Auburn from the 29. And Auburn has Mike Mann in at quarterback number 17. He came in for Pat Washington here with a large 29 to 10 lead. Reggie Ware carrying the ball on the play. Here's Mike Mann who's a senior from Silicauga, Alabama. 5'11", 185. Time down to 437 remaining in this game. Auburn, Alabama. It's complete to Wigan, number 14. Terry Brown with the tackle for Tennessee. Little option pass delivered right on time by Mike Mann. Wigan hooks up at about eight yards. You can even see him in your picture. Great shot by our camera. Tries to beat Terry Brown, but Terry holds on. Never forget my introduction to the War Eagle. I'll tell you about that in a second, Tom. First down, 10. Auburn. Curtis Stewart, number 33, with the carry. That's the first time Curtis Stewart has played this year for Auburn, too. Curtis Stewart, one of those youngsters, sophomore from Montgomery, hasn't seen any action thus far, but... A lot of people were asking Pat Dye in his call-in show about Curtis Stewart. He says he's fine running back, too. Pat Dye. A lot of folks going to be singing that War Eagle song after this game. Second down, seven. From the 44-yard line of Auburn. They'll just keep that ball on the ground. Tennessee has only one timeout remaining to try to stop that clock, and it's 29-10 Auburn. Number 36, Reggie Ware. It's Tennessee jammed up in there on the line of scrimmage where bounced outside and got it inside Tennessee territory down to about the 43 and a half. We see Reggie Ware carry the football. Mike Mann makes the decision. The tackle does not close it. So Reggie Ware just keeps it and rolls on down the road. And now Demetrius Threat is in, number 26, and at fullback for Auburn. And Louvel Bivens, the freshman, is in at the right halfback position. Here's Mann. Completes to number 87, Ron Middleton, the tight end of the 34-yard line. Clock down to 257 and counting. Cooper with the tackle. And Tim, as you look at the replay, I want to hear the story about when you first were introduced to the Auburn War Eagle. Well, we were down in Miami in 1970. Colin and I were both rookies, and Mike was a very quiet individual, an intense player, and uh, <laughs> had a tremendous voice. You know, and one thing you do as rookies is you sing your team's fight song, and it was just great to hear Colin singing, War Eagle, fly down to the other. And he's a successful businessman over in Montgomery now, very involved in the community. He's heading up a political campaign there in the Montgomery out the area for Albert Lee Smith. Great person. Everybody that's in Auburn can identify with Auburn, certainly should be proud of a guy like Mike Colin. Two minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the game. Auburn 29, Tennessee 10. Here's Mike Mann. In the upfield to the 28-yard line. Tackle by Joe Cooper. Want to remind you, on most of these stations, immediately following the game, we'll have highlights and updates. Your most complete coverage of college football on the Football Action Report with Craig Sager and Paul Orning. So if you're wondering what's going on all over the country today, you can find out in great detail from those gentlemen right after this game today on most of these stations. Bivens, Ware, and number eight, Terry Walker in the game for Auburn now. 
That's Luval Bivens with the carry. Aaron Miller with the tackle. We're going to be going up to Oxford, Mississippi next week. Uh, following the War Eagles up there. Two games with Auburn in a row. Ole Miss Rebels under Billy Brewer playing Tulane. They're scoreless 0-0 in the first quarter. It'll be noon Eastern time on most of these stations next Saturday. Speaking of Auburn, great players. Just looking down the booth, you can see Pat Sullivan. With his headset on. He works for the radio station here in Auburn doing the color for the Auburn Tigers. Third down to Auburn. Man, after the fake, keeps the ball and goes down at the 26. Pat Sullivan, of course, a Heisman Trophy winner here. You know, John Heisman coached here at one time. He also coached the Tech, of course. And Pat dies. Had one of those games that coaches hope for. A big lead the last quarter. He's able to rest a lot of players as the clock just keeps on ticking down. Got a lot of players into the game with a little bit of game experience and also go away with a win, 29 to 10. Less than a minute now. Reggie oh, Ware to the five-yard line. Cooper with the tackle. The clock will stop at 49 seconds while they move the chains. Pat Dye thinks Reggie Ware is going to be a great player. Man leaves it in there. Reggie Blake breaks clean. And he looks like he starts to look around a little bit, like he's a little bit unfamiliar with that much daylight. Kofer comes over and corrals him. Powerful running back. And number 31, Jim Duncan, as you look at where Jim Duncan being aided off the field for Tennessee. We have an updated score, by the way, from Tuscaloosa with five minutes remaining in that game. Vanderbilt leading Alabama 23 to 13. Five minutes remaining in the Vanderbilt-Alabama game. And I think that's probably a good expression of the way the Tennessee fans feel. There's Smokey, the blue tick coon hound mascot of Tennessee. But if you're a Tennessee fan, you're like Smokey. You are loyal, and they will hang in there. Reggie Ware with the carry, down to 35 seconds. And more mass substitutions now for Auburn for the last play of the ball game. Auburn just had more men on the chessboard this afternoon. Gutty performance from uh, the Tennessee defense produced five turnovers, and they weren't all Auburn mistakes. Some of those balls were torn out, and just hard defensive play. Auburn will probably just fall on the ball down here as the clock runs down. And Mike Mann does that, electing to show a lot of class and not add insult to injury. Auburn wins this ball game, 29 to 10, against a banged up, nicked up Tennessee volunteer team who hung in there the best they could, thanks to the Auburn turnovers in the first, second, and third quarter. But then the superior manpower of Auburn just wore at the Volunteers for the 29 to 10 victory. And the Tigers open their SEC season 1 and 0 now. This is Turner Network Television.